Hi, welcome back to The Perspective on Buddy Tassatu. I'm Blaze Hope with David Edelman, former U.S. Ambassador to Singapore. Uh, we spoke about the Trans-Pacific Partnership before the break. Uh, we spoke about why it's in America's interests. Why is it in uh, the interest of Asian countries? Well, as we touched on briefly before the break, I think that uh, Trans-Pacific trade flows, trade flows in both directions, will undoubtedly increase and do so dramatically uh, as we tie together these 12 uh, important economies. And the investment flows are likely to follow. An aspect of the TPP that is not often discussed uh, is the investment chapter. Uh, this will be similar to the investment chapter you find in the North American Free Trade Agreement, which has been very successful in increasing American uh, investments uh, to the other uh, NAFTA economies, and I think that will be the case with TPP. Uh, and of course, the United States is interested in investment flows um, from the uh, Asia Pacific into the United States. So it's, it's going to benefit not just um, exporters on both sides of the Pacific, um, but also be a magnet, I think, for capital flows across the Pacific. Is this uh, a containment strategy for China? Well, we hear that a lot. When, when you go around talking about the TPP, that question comes up uh, a lot. Uh, and I think it's clear from Washington that's not the case. Uh, what the pivot is about really is um, strengthening our friendship, friendships across the Pacific so that the rising tide uh, will lift all boats. The deal is open in the sense that technically uh, uh, it's something that China could pursue for purposes uh, of being a party, but maybe most importantly, I think what you see with the American pivot, especially um, the trade and investment aspect of the pivot, uh, is our effort to deeply engage our friends and allies in the region so as to give them strength and act as a fair counterweight uh, to a rising uh, China. I think all of Asia benefits from a deeper American presence, and especially an American presence that brings American know-how, American goods and services, uh, and the strength of the American economy in this part of the world. And it's important, I think, to look at the words that uh, President Xi Jinping uh, used in Beijing only last week when he was asked this question. Uh, I think he spoke of it very constructively and positively uh, and said he did not see the Trans-Pacific Partnership as something that was part um, of an effort to in any way impede the development of China. Do you think China could join in time? You know, it's hard to know. Um, one would be hopeful that the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, is a pathway to a free trade area of the Pacific that could ultimately uh, include China, the second largest uh, economy in the world. It's important to note when, when you know, talking about this issue that the United States and China already have a very substantial uh, economic relationship. Mm -hmm. Something I'm tracking very closely um, for uh, my clients and colleagues is the developments on something called the U.S.-China Bilateral Investment Treaty, which is a bilateral um, agreement uh, being negotiated between the United States and China, which would uh, establish the rules of the road for American investors in China and Chinese investors in the United States, provide a little more uh, certainty uh, with regard to those rules so as hopefully to increase uh, direct investment between the United States and China. So the TPP is not really being negotiated uh, in isolation, and I think that's reflected in what you heard from President Xi in Beijing last week. Is the, uh, the China-led Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, is that uh, disruptive? to U.S. efforts? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, that issue received uh, 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 a lot of conversation and commentary uh, in the last couple of weeks, but I see the um, Asian Investment Infrastructure Bank as being complementary of what the U.S., Japan, and others do at the Asian Development Bank and what the World Bank has done uh, successfully. So my personal opinion is the AIIB is um, evidence of China's willingness to constructively uh, engage in the region. The United States um, found it very important to urge our friends uh, and allies to ensure that the rules of the new bank be of a very high standard, and I think everyone can appreciate why that would be the, the American position. But in the end, uh, I think that the more investment that goes into the development of an infrastructure and investment in this part of the region, the better. Moving to the South China Sea, if uh, China continues to reassert its claims, I mean, will the U.S. be taking sort of direct action, or, or is it going to be left to, to Asian countries? Well, this is a very complicated uh, question. Um, the starting point, of course, is the United States has always stood 
with our friends and allies in the region, and that's uh, unshakable. The maritime territorial disputes in the East China Sea and South China Sea, of course, are um, complicated. Oftentimes, you hear them discussed in terms of hydrocarbons and the um, potential energy production in the uh, contested territories. That's important. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you hear the conversation center around agriculture, fishing rights uh, in the disputed territories, also important. Um, the, the, the two aspects of it that maybe get less attention, I think, uh, provide the greatest risk. First, there's the sovereignty uh, discussion. They're competing maps. China famously has its nine uh, dotted lines, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Philippines, uh, all also have maps uh, which lay claim to some of these territories. But border disputes have existed around the world for thousands of years and countries don't necessarily um, go to war or engage in conflict over competing maps. Uh, the fourth aspect of this I think is the one uh, leaders uh, in world capitals everywhere should keep a very close uh, watch on and that is the rise of nationalism. Mm -hmm. uh, nationalism exists everywhere. Uh, the countries in Asia don't have a sole proprietorship on nationalism. We certainly have plenty of it uh, in the United States. Uh, and nationalism can sometimes get away from countries. Uh, it would be um, unfortunate uh, if nationalism fueled uh, an escalation of the maritime territorial disputes in this part of the world. The American position has always been there should be uh, a code of conduct in place uh, and that uh, disputes should be um, resolved according to that uh, code of conduct. The code of conduct to be effective, of course, would have to have enforcement mechanisms. Uh, and I think that is the best position and it's one that's favored by most of the countries in this part of the world. Well, a, lot, a lot's come up there. Uh, you brought in, bring in nationalism and, and maritime affairs. Obviously, there's a push to establish Indonesia's or enforce Indonesia's maritime sovereignty. Nationalism here is, is such a part of the conversation. It's never considered in the same light as it uh, as it is in Europe, yeah. where it's always you're always hesitant. It's almost entirely viewed as positive here. Do you think that's problematic? No, not necessarily. Uh, the people of Indonesia are proud and for good reason. Uh, Indonesians have realized um, great success. Uh, it's a result of the people uh, of, of Indonesia and inspired um, leadership uh, in Indonesia. So I don't think nationalism um, here should be especially troubling. I think the important um, aspect of nationalism when it comes to international affairs uh, is to ensure that nationalism doesn't turn into economic protectionism so as to, in a way, isolate Indonesia from the increasingly interdependent global economy and to ensure that nationalism doesn't escalate it in a way so that there might be conflict over territories, um, which in the end um, does not serve Indonesia nor does it serve uh, anyone well. Uh, what, what things from your perspective, from your time in Singapore uh, especially, um, the, um, what things do you think President Joko Widodo needs to change the most? in terms of allowing uh, greater exposure to um, outside uh, business? Well, it's, it's not for me to provide advice um, to the president here in Indonesia, um, but what I will say is to the extent Indonesia continues to engage the world uh, on both trade and investment, uh, in my view that will serve all of Indonesia well. Okay, well we'll go to break now, uh, but stay with us on The Perspective. Thank you.